Hey friends, this is Angela from Art of Creation Homestead. You're in the kitchen with me again. And today, as you can probably tell by this, we are probably going to make some kind of cake. And if you know anything about baking, you know it's probably going to be some kind of pound cake. Well, if that's what you suspected, you're 100% right. Reach back and give yourself a good pat on the back. <laughs> what we are actually making today is one of my very favorite things. It is a sour cream pound cake. Oh my gosh. They are so moist and so delicious. <gasps> I just adore it. Me and Jason both just adore sour cream pound cake. I've been making this pretty much most of our marriage. I have been making sour cream pound cake and we have enjoyed it thoroughly. Now you want to start out, you want your, to preheat your oven to 325 degrees. Yes, you want a low temperature. And I have gr thoroughly greased and floured a 10 inch tube pan. You can use a tube pan, you can use a bunt pan, or you can use two loaf pans. Any of them will work. I'm using a 10 inch tube pan today and I just sprayed it with some coconut oil spray and then dusted it thoroughly with some flour. I have mine sitting on a lined cookie sheet because I find that it slides in and out of the oven more easily if it's sitting on a cookie sheet and it also it also tends to sit more level on the rack if I sit it on a cookie sheet so that's kind of my little tip that I that I do now this just takes a very few simple ingredients to make a delicious sour cream pound cake so let's get started you can either do this in a KitchenAid which I am doing today or some kind of stand mixer or you can do this with a hand mixer. You can also do this by hand if you have arm muscles like Gorgeous George. If you don't have arm muscles like Gorgeous George, I recommend you use a machine for it. So in this bowl, we have two sticks, which is one cup of unsalted butter that has been softened to room temperature. We also have three cups of granulated sugar. Yes, I know that's a lot of sugar, but you're not gonna eat a humongous bit of pound cake at one time. It's dense and it's satisfying. You don't need a ton of it to satisfy you. So we are going to cream this up until it's nice and creamy. I'll show you what it looks like when it's there. Now as you can see the sugar and butter are thoroughly combined and starting to become a little on the creamy side. You don't want it, it doesn't have to become completely creamy. But until it, it starts to come together and it, there's not lumps of sugar and lumps of butter and all this stuff, when it comes together that way and it becomes more like a creamy paste, that's when you're ready to st start adding the next ingredients. Which is six large eggs, which is perfect for us right now because we have a whole lot of eggs. So I, I'm doing a lot of recipes with eggs right now. So we're going to add these eggs one at a time. Like I said, six large eggs, one at a time, mixing thoroughly between each egg. Now, as you can see, it's all combined. I've got all six eggs in. And at this point, if you've never made pound cake, you probably don't know this. At this point, your batter will start to look a little almost curdled. And you'll think, oh no, I've ruined this puppy. It's never going to come together. It's never going to look normal. No, trust me. It's going to come together beautifully. So don't get discouraged. It's it's going to come together beautifully. And as you can see, I'm scraping down the bottoms and sides of my bowl. You don't want to miss any of this. For one thing, there's so few ingredients that you, you don't want to miss any of it, really. I'm adding one tablespoon, yes, I said tablespoon, of vanilla extract. Yes, you will see me measure this one. A tablespoon is a lot of vanilla. So I am actually measuring vanilla this time. I know. Wonders never cease, huh? Now you are going to mix that in thoroughly. This takes very few ingredients. So try your best to do to get the best quality ingredients you can. Because it's going to make all the difference in the flavor because there's so few ingredients. So use real unsalted butter instead of margarine. Use pure vanilla extract. Do the little steps like that and you will end up with a much better end product. And this right here is one of those little picky things that is going to make a huge difference. This right here is three cups of cake flour. Now I seldom use cake flour. Most of the time I just use all purpose. But for pound cake, 
cake flour makes all the difference in the world. It really does, especially for sour cream pound cake. Cake flour makes all the difference in the world in the texture and in the crumb. You want that luxurious crumb on a pound cake and how you're going to get it is with cake flour. Now, if you don't have cake flour, you can use all purpose flour or you can make your own cake flour by taking one cup of, for every one cup of cake flour that you need, you will take one cup of all purpose flour, take three tablespoons out, put three tablespoons of cornstarch in. Then you will sift that about three times to make it light and airy like this cake flour is. So you have three cups of cake flour, a fourth of a teaspoon of baking soda, not baking powder, baking soda because you will get your rice from your eggs and the little bit of baking soda will react with the sourness of the sour cream, with the acid of the sour cream to help give more leaven. And we have a half a teaspoon of salt. Now, you guys know I use wax paper to help me funnel it into the mixer better. So, we are going to add that, we are going to add the dry ingredients alternately with one cup, which is eight ounces, of full fat sour cream. People, this is, this is pound cake. If you're eating it, don't go, don't go low fat or fat free sour cream. First off, it's going to ruin your recipe. Second, you're already eating pound cake. So who cares about the extra fat and sour cream? Now we are going to add the sour cream and the dry ingredients alternately. Starting and ending with, with the flour. And I usually do three parts usually dump the flour in three parts and the sour cream in in two parts. So here we go. First installment of flour. You want to mix thoroughly between each one. That's about a third of our flour mixture. You want to mix thoroughly between each one and this is where you will see it losing that curdled look. Now after we've added that flour we're going to scrape down our bowl. Get all that flour down off the sides. And we are going to now add half of our one cup of full fat sour cream. So I'm gonna mix this sour cream in thoroughly. Now I'm gonna add the next third of our flour mixture, then the last of our sour cream, and then we will add the last flour installment. And then we'll be back and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, as you can see, our batter is thoroughly mixed now. I'm giving it one last scrape down of the bowl, getting all the way down to the bottom, making sure everything is incorporated. And as you can see, that curdledness has went away and you have this extremely silky smooth batter. Now, I will tell you, I have been making this particular sour cream pound cake for <laughs> forever. <laughs> for the majority of our marriage. I think, I think I started making it probably in the first year of our marriage. If you follow these instructions that I'm giving you, it will turn out perfect every time because it is glorious. Trust me, it is glorious. Now we are going to load it into our tube pan. Now this is a heavy baby. So don't expect when you pick up that bowl, don't expect it to be light and airy. <laughs> This is pound cake we're talking about. Pound cake is a heavy batter. Now we are going to smooth our top down. Now that all the batter's in there, we are going to smooth our top down. And we are gonna run a knife in zigzags around in it to bust up any air bubbles. Because you don't want big holes in your pound cake. So as you can see, I did zigzags. Now I'm doing swirls. You don't want to scrape the bottom because you don't want to scrape up that flour mixture because you did such a good job greasing and flouring, you don't want to mess that up because then it's going to stick. And there's nothing more tragic than to make this pound cake and have it stick. So now you want to smooth it back out. Now just give it a little shimmy shake. That helps as well with some of the air bubbles. Now give it a couple of drops. It'll help more to bring out the air bubbles because they'll come to the top of the cake and they'll bust. Now, this is going to go into our 325 degree preheated oven 
for quite a while. <laughs> it has to bake for quite a while until a toothpick inserted in the center comes out with moist crumbs, not dry. If it comes out dry, it's going to be overbaked by the time it carry over cooks. So, make sure you take it out of the oven when there's still moist crumbs on your... I'll be back and show you what this gloriousness looks like when it finally comes out of the oven. Okay, this beauty is out of the oven and the whole house smells amazing. It looks beautiful. It rose perfectly and it came out beautifully. I inserted a toothpick in the center. It came out with just moist crumbs. You don't want it to come out clean. If so, by the time it carryover cooks, it will be overbaked because you have to let it cool completely in the pan before you remove it. Now, this baked for between an hour and 20 minutes and an hour and 30 minutes to be oddly specific. Mine baked for an hour and 24 minutes. Now, to keep it from cracking in a weird way, we are going to take a knife, just a butter knife, and we are gonna run it around the outside when it's just out of the oven because that will help loosen it from the pan that way it's not stuck to the sides of the pan and it's trying to shrink as it cools and that will cause that will actually cause your cake to start pulling apart and cracking in the middle you don't want that so do this when it's just out of the oven as you can see i'm also doing it around the cone in the center and this will help it to cool better and shrink down better without causing damage to your cake. And as you can see, it come loose really well. Hopefully that means we greased and floured the pan good. Fingers crossed. Now, you wanna let this cool completely on a wire rack, particular, preferably on a wire rack. If you do not have one, you can let it cool on cans. You can set it up on cans that way airflow can get under it and all around it so it makes for an easier cool now if you are like me and put it on a cookie sheet you want to remove it from the cookie sheet and put it direct on the the wire rack or the cans so that it will cool completely and airflow can get around it you want to leave this in the pan until it is completely cool to the touch, room temperature to the touch, the pan is, the cake is, until it's completely room temperature to the touch. Now, I also forgot to tell you, when it's done, you will push on it, and it will kind of spring back a little bit. It won't spring back a lot, because pound cake is a dense cake, so it won't spring back a lot, but it will spring back some. Now, let's see if this came out good. It's nice and cool to the touch. Still got a little warmth to it, but that's fine. Now you want to run your knife around it again, around the whole thing and around the center. Make sure everything's nice and loose. Now at this point you have a choice. If you are the type that has to have a glaze or an icing on your pound cake, by all means go ahead and make your favorite glaze or icing. I am a pound cake purist and I know Jason is too. We both like it just like it is. So. To me, this top crust right here, because you've got a nice crust. Hear that? You've got a nice crust on top. That crust is my favorite part. This part right here is my favorite part because this, this part is crusty and this part is soft and gooey. And the top is my favorite part. So I don't want to do anything to mess that up. Now, if you're like me and you love this top part, do not invert it and keep it inverted. Now, you'll, you'll probably have to invert it to get it out of the pan but you don't want to keep it inverted because that this top will get soggy. So if you are like me, you will want to flip it back over so that the bottom is the bottom and the top is the top. But if you are going to make a glaze or an icing, you will want to invert it because it won't matter then because this crust won't stay there once you put a glaze or an icing on it. So now with a tube pan, you have to let gravity do, do the work for you. Once you've run that around there, you want to stick your fingers in the hole and tap, 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 tap. And you want, to, you want to tap it around and around and around. And see if it comes out. Now we will invert it onto a plate if it comes out. Cross your fingers. 
I heard I heard a pop and as you can see it came out perfect so now I'm gonna flip it back over and because a pound cake is so sturdy I can flip it easy and look at that beautifulness look at that it came up perfect no sticking at all that means I greased and floured it perfect now we're gonna let this finish cooling because it's still just a little warm although it's very tempting to eat it slice into it and eat it right now but I won't I'll be calm and let it finish cooling and we will let Jason taste this when he gets home and I know he'll be so happy because this is also one of his favorites so you'll just have to wait until Jason tastes for you when it gets completely cool then you'll see how delicious it really is all right there you have it it's a, it's a beautiful that's a beautiful cake look at that I'm just excited about trying it I really truly like that that crust that top end piece there I really appreciate that on the pound cakes and Angela K makes them it's been a while since you made one though so I'm excited about trying it mmm mmm it was so good. Absolutely amazing. The simplest of things, seriously. Like, pound cake is a simple flavor, right? And <clears throat> there's very little, like, I'm not, very, very few ingredients, truly. So there's not a whole lot going into it to make a bunch of different, uh, big complex flavor. It's a very simplified flavor, and it's amazing. I absolutely love it. Very rich, and Honestly, we love using our eggs anyways. So anytime we get a chance to use our, a bunch of our eggs, we really love it. So we're happy with it. It's amazing. Angela K killed it as always. And honestly, you want to try pound cake? Try that one. So thank you guys so much for watching. We do appreciate it. My name is Jason. That's smart. Her name is Angela K. This is Art of Creation Homes. They love y'all. God bless you and goodbye.